Hello and welcome to CAD Tech Seminars Tip of the Week. In this week we'll dis discuss some ways to bring in CAD files and bring them directly into Revit. Now the most common way is to just drop a CAD file directly into let's say a drafting view. We'll do that real quick. So here we go. We'll go up top, create a view, start drafting view. Drafting one's fine, hit OK. Once that pops up, we have our drafting view here. We'll go to insert link CAD or import CAD, either one depending on your needs, and then we'll go out and find a file. I'll just go to my desktop. I'll pick, let's say, one of these folders here, and we'll go to this elevation, and we hit open. Change the colors to black and white, hit open, and you'll see how that file actually drops in to this location. So let's bring it in. Uh, once it's in, we'll type ZE, and that's going to do a zoom extent. ZE. And there it is. So we placed it into in here. Now we can now take this and drop it onto a sheet. So we've created a drafting view, like so. And now I have just a sheet like well, pop open. Let's go to a different one. I'm not actually sure what um the project I have open, but it really doesn't matter. So here we have uh this item, I drag and drop it and it places it on the sheet. So there you go, that's pretty easy. Uh the next one is a little bit more frustrating. We'll go back to level one. I cut a section here, I go through the section. Let's say I want to bring in a detail. Let's say it is a door opener or some assembly that's going to snap to this object. If I go up top and I go to again insert uh, import CAD or link CAD, I pick an object, I hit OK. And if you wonder why I have so many copies in here, because different ways of bringing it in. Sometimes Rabbit throws a fit if you try to bring the same one in. So I made a few copies real quick just so the different times I bring it in, it didn't throw a fit. So. Uh, I can just say instead of center to center, I'm going to say manual origin or manual center. It means it'll be stuck to my cursor at the center of the object. Again, black and white, we hit open. So it comes in, looks all good. We place it. And you'll notice how it's hidden behind the wall. Now, in some scenarios, you might think, oh, that's fine. But you'll notice in this scenario, maybe not what we need. Now, let's take a look at another scenario. Go back to one here, and you'll notice that's the depth, the depth of the cut. If I can actually get it to fire up. Uh, if I take the depth that I cut and move it back some, I'll go back to that section, you'll see that's hidden behind the building. So we need it in the foreground. Now there's uh, some things that bring the front, and we can try some of these, but very seldom we get it in front of the wall here. So how do we alleviate or make this happen? Um, I'm going to delete the object out of here, and I'm going to do a little trick. I'm just going to create what's called a detail component, and they're easy to create, and then we can add it just about anywhere. So this extra step, is going to do a couple things. First of all, it'll create the object. Let's say it's a, a rolling door um, detail. Um, and we want to use it over and over again. So we can put it in a space where we can use it again and again. Or uh, just down and dirty, we need to place it and we want it to be on this surface. We'll go to R. We'll go New. What do we want to create? A new family. When we scroll down, you'll see there's one in here called um, Detail Component. When I hit Detail Component, I hit it Open. What's going to happen is it opens up a white sheet of paper, similar to before. At this point, I'm going to go uh, again, insert. We'll go CAD file. We'll bring the CAD file in again, manually center, black and white, all the same, and we place it in here. Now, for the most part, you're thinking it looks just like the one before, but uh, this time it's going to do something different. We'll even get a little fancier. We can go over here, and you see under the Home tab, we can add masking regions, filled regions. So I'm just going to fill to a masking region behind, let's say, half one of these. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to make a little masking region, right? I can lock to the object. I hit Finish. Now, we've got that masking region. You don't notice much here, but let's see what happens when we load into the project. Load into the project, and here we are. We're going to go back to that section. Now, now here it is. You can actually see it rolling over the wall. As I roll over the wall and I place it, you'll see how it actually whites out the wall, and I can place it in any view. So I've placed it in this view. Now if I move over a little bit and I place it like so, see how we can see through it, because half of it has a whiteout, half of it doesn't. Let's go to our section. Here it is. Now if we want it to just sit in the room, well, it makes it quite easy. It's a detail element. We just go again, back to the annotation tab. We're going to go to component, right? Uh, detail component. And there it is stuck to our cursor. Uh, we could put it like so. That was pretty easy. Or, if need be, let's say we need to put it on top of the wall. As I move it over, you'll notice how it, as it sits on top of the wall, it actually covers up the wall itself. So a real nice little tool or tip 
is the trick is just create a detail component that's going to give you a lot of flexibility and place it where you want wherever you want and it's going to work correctly so there it is uh, tip of the week from CAD Tech Seminars we do Revit consulting implementation and training and if you're interested in us please check us out on the web at freerevittraining.com thank you